greetings, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the art of integration. We're going to introduce a peculiar property of definite integrals that's extremely useful for evaluating tricky integrals. In this video, we're going to go through an introduction to this property, a geometric understanding of this property, a short proof, and then two problems. So let's get first to the introduction, what this property actually is. And it's really simple. We have a definite integral from a to b of some function f of x. And the property here is we can replace inside our function f of x. The inside gets replaced with a plus b minus x. And these two integrals are equal. Notice the limits from a to b stay the same, but it's the inside that's different. And this inside here, that's going to make all the difference to allowing us to easily evaluate some of these integrals over there. Now, just by looking at it, it doesn't seem to be true, or at least obviously true, but we're going to see that geometrically in a moment. Now, there's some places where you might have encountered this. The first place I encountered it is in one of my favorite calculus books by Spivak, and it's just stated as a simple problem. Basically, it just asks you to prove it using a substitution, and that's it. There's other places online where this property is referred to as the king rule, which is what you might know it by. Now, just by looking at this, again, this is not obvious, but before we get to our problems, let's get to a geometric understanding of this property of definite integrals. To understand this peculiar property geometrically, we need to recall that a definite integral at a basic level calculates area. So let's start with a simple visual representation for maybe a definite integral, very simple function here. And the integral is going to go from a to b. That's the integral in question that we typically are going to start with. Now, the key to understanding this peculiar property is to take a look at the inside, the combination of a plus b minus x. And we're going to view that as a composition of two different transformations. First, there's a reflection over the y-axis and that's followed by a horizontal shift. Now the reflection over the y-axis is straightforward. We're going to replace x with negative x. And if we do that, this integral flips over the y-axis and we get to here. Now you can actually prove that this integral here equals this one, this property down here, with a simple substitution, t equals negative x. And you can go through the work for that to prove algebraically that those are equal. Now, geometrically, we can understand that these areas should be equal because when we take an area and translate or reflect it or in combinations together, the area shouldn't change. So geometrically, those two areas should be equal and they are. Now, to get to our property here, the peculiar property, we're going to take this reflected integral and then we're going to shift that to the right by a plus b units. And just be careful, remember when you shift to the right, you replace x with x minus the number of units that you're shifting. So just be careful with the work here. I have it worked out in detail for the order of the transformations that we're applying. First, we're reflecting over the y-axis. That's this first step here, replacing x with negative x. And then everywhere there's an x inside there, and be careful to use parentheses, we're going to replace x with x minus a plus b. And just be careful with that negative in front there. That comes from the reflection over the y-axis. Carry that out and simplify it. And we get the function in the peculiar property, f of a plus b minus x. Now, that's all the algebraic simplifications for the transformations. But if we pick up in the middle here, again, this is the integral reflected over the y-axis. If we now take that and shift that to the right, our integral now looks like this. And because, again, we're applying a combination of reflections and translations, this integral should be equal to that one, and this integral should be equal to that one. And that's all due to area being invariant or not changing under translations and reflections. So with that out of the way, you might be able to see geometrically why this peculiar property is true. Now, what we're going to get to momentarily in the next part is the proof 
for integral one and integral three being equal. That's the peculiar property that we want to prove. Now, it's a good warm up and practice, which you might want to go through before we get to that proof. Try to prove this property using your substitution t equals negative x and go through everything in detail. Calculate the differential dt, you'll get an extra negative. And since we have a definite integral, change or convert your limits here from x limits to t limits. And then just make use of a property of integrals where you flip the limits of integration, you introduce an extra negative, and you can easily prove that property. Now we're gonna be using all those to prove the peculiar property, which we'll get to right now. At this point, we're ready for the proof. And all the work that we need to go through is a basic substitution. So let's go ahead and start with our integral, the integral from a to b of f of x, and we're gonna make a non-obvious substitution. We're gonna go with t. You can use whatever substitution variable you want, maybe u, I'm gonna use t, and we're gonna make the substitution t equals a plus b minus x. We're gonna calculate the differential, dt. We're thinking of a and b as constants, so they're gonna to differentiate to zero. The derivative of negative x, that'll be negative one, so we get dt equals negative dx. All right, we're performing a substitution on a definite integral. I always change or convert the limits from original x limits, which are from a to b. And now we use our substitution, t equals a plus b minus x, and we're gonna calculate our new t limits. So if we plug in x as a, notice the a's cancel out due to the negative there. Plug in x as a, you get b. And now when you plug in x as b, now it's the b's that cancel, leaving you with a. So that's kind of interesting that this substitution basically switches the limits of integration. All right, now to implement this substitution, we're gonna have to substitute here x and dx in terms of this combination of t and dt. So we can just solve, take your substitution here, and if we solve that for x, add x and then subtract t, we get x comes out to be a plus b minus t, and to convert dx, just bring that negative to the other side, and we get dx equals negative dt. Now we can plug everything in. First off, we're using our new t limits, so our integral to start goes from b to a. All right, we're gonna get a negative in our differential dx. Let me just put that negative right in front here. And we have our function, but instead of having x, we're replacing x with a plus b minus t. That's in terms of our original substitution. So we get f of a plus b minus t, and that's now being integrated with respect to t. Now that looks close to what we're trying to prove, our peculiar property of definite integrals, but it's not quite right. Notice we have a negative and our limits of integration are incorrect. Well, we can just make use of a property, a basic property of definite integrals. When we flip our limits of integration, we get an extra negative sign, which if we flip those limits, that extra negative will cancel out with this one. So what we get, flipping or switching those limits, we get an integral from a to b now of f of a plus b minus t. And that's technically what we're trying to prove. Now, some of you might argue, but wait a minute, that's an integral in terms of t, but at this point, because we have a definite integral, the variable here, t, sometimes referred to as a dummy variable. In other words, the variable that you use doesn't matter with a definite integral. So if you just change here, we're just switching, replace all t's with x, not even going through an actual substitution, we're just changing the variable to a different one. We get here an integral from a to b of f of a plus b minus x dx. 
And that's the proof for our peculiar property of definite integrals, also known as the King Rule. It's really simple, and it's a straightforward substitution here. Definitely a little bit non-obvious, but that's it. Now, here, the proof is really simple. How you apply this peculiar property, that takes a lot more work and creativity. All right, now with this proof out of the way, before we get to the problems, let's go ahead and take a look at a slightly more useful version of this peculiar property that I really like. Next, we're gonna take a look at an equivalent version of our peculiar property that's a little bit more useful for algebraic simplifications. Now the property actually looks a lot more complicated. We have now the integral from a to b of f of x equals one half of the integral from a to b of this combination f of x plus f of a plus b minus x. Now this is really the original version, but it saves us some extra steps and allows us to more quickly get to the algebraic simplifications. Now again, the proof is really simple, which we'll go through right now. And this saves you some work in some of the tricky integrals that you might be applying this rule or property to. Typically, you might take an integral and then add it to itself. This version allows you to bypass that and get through the problems a little bit quicker. So we're gonna take our integral and split it up as one half of our integral from A to B. and then plus another one half of our integral from A to B. All right, at this point, we know our peculiar property allows us to rewrite this integral from A to B of F of X. We can rewrite that using our main peculiar property. We're gonna keep this first integral exactly the same and now we apply the peculiar property here. We have one half out front, the integral from A to B, but now F of A plus B minus X. And from here, we can go ahead and combine these integrals together using some basic properties of definite integrals, factor the one half out, and we can write this as the integral from A to B of f of x plus f of a plus b minus x. And there we go. Now in the problems that we're about to get to, problems one and two from the intro, this version is really quick to apply, but just keep in mind, you might wanna use the original version of our peculiar property or the king rule as well. They are equivalent but we're gonna see this version in action right now. For our first problem, we're gonna take a look at a standard integral from a calculus two course, the integral from zero to pi over two of the function sine squared of x. Now the usual way that's advocated in a calculus two course to go through this integral is to make use of this reduction identity, reducing the power sine squared down to something that's a lot more easy to integrate. And that's completely fine, you can go through that. But what we're going to see is if we make use of our peculiar property of definite integrals, specifically this alternate version that we just proved, we'll be able to get through evaluating this integral a lot faster. So let's go ahead and start by applying our peculiar property here. We'll be using a as zero and b as pi over two. So this alternate version, we get a factor of one half out front our integral still goes from zero to pi over two. And we have our function f of x, which is sine squared. And now we replace inside the other part here, the inside with pi over two minus x. So we get sine squared of pi over two minus x. Now this actually looks worse than the original integral that we started with, but the key along with this peculiar property of definite integrals, we can simplify this with some trig identities. So when you're applying this peculiar property, when you're applying the King rule, almost always if there's trig functions involved, 
you're gonna be making use of these basic trig identities. So make sure you know them. Now what we're gonna be using here is we have sine of pi over two minus x, that's all squared. And we're gonna notice sine of pi over two minus theta, that equals cosine of theta. So we can replace this part right here, that equals cosine squared of just x. So what we get for our integral, we have our factor of one half, our integral goes from zero to pi over two. We have sine squared of x. And now the key, this term, by making use of our peculiar property, we can rewrite that as cosine squared of x. And we all know the most important trig identity, the basic Pythagorean identity. The part inside the brackets here just equals one and we get a really simple integral. We have a factor of one half, and we're just integrating zero to pi over two of one dx, or just dx. And at that point, if you evaluate that, that integral just comes out to pi over two. And if you simplify, we get the value for our integral here as pi over four. And there we go. You'll get the same value here, again, if you go through the basic approach from calculus two, but notice that's a lot more streamlined here. Now, this one is really simple because again, we can do it with some more basic methods. We don't actually need the peculiar property or the king rule here, but we're gonna see our second example is a lot more complicated. For our second problem, we'll take a look at an integral that is a lot more complicated if we use basic or straightforward methods. Now it can be done, but it's a lot more work and we'll save that for a future video. Here, we're gonna evaluate this integral using our peculiar property and the work will be minimal. So let's get right to it. Here, we'll again be using a as zero and b as pi over two. And we're gonna start by applying the alternate version of this peculiar property. So we start by applying it. We get now a factor of one half the integral goes from zero to pi over two. And we have two terms. We have the original function, this original fraction. The denominator is sine of x plus cosine of x. The numerator is sine of x. And now we replace x everywhere in our function with a plus b minus x in general. Here, that reduces down to pi over two minus x. So add to that, replacing all x's with pi over two minus x. So we get sine of pi over two minus x in the denominator, sine of pi over two minus x, and then plus cosine of pi over two minus x. All right, now again, this work actually looks like we made the integral worse, but the key here is applying some trig identities. And we can replace sine of pi over two minus x with cosine of x and cosine of pi over two minus x with sine of x. So let's write out where we are right now. We have our factor of one half. We have our integral from zero to pi over two. We're gonna keep the first fraction or function the same. And now we apply the trig identities here. The numerator becomes cosine of x. And in the denominator, the sine term here, we can replace that with just cosine of x. And the cosine term, we can replace that with just sine of x. And at this point, notice that we have a common denominator, so we can add these fractions together. And what we are left with in the numerator is sine of x plus cosine of x. And that's over the same quantity in the denominator. 
sine of x plus cosine of x. And that whole fraction cancels to 1, so we're left here with the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of dx. And that's really simple. That integral, that just evaluates to pi over 2. So we get the value for our whole integral here as pi over 4. And notice that work is very minimal. And the key here was two parts this alternate version for the peculiar property of definite integrals and trig identities. So as you're going through these problems linked in the intro, make sure you keep in mind trig identities, typically where you apply this peculiar property or where you apply the King rule, you almost always encounter trig functions and it's these trig identities that is really the key to making this algebraic simplification work. Hope you enjoyed this video in our series, The Art of Integration, where we're all about creative ways to solve integrals. We're going to have other videos where we apply this peculiar property coming up in the near future. If you enjoyed the content, you know what to do. Like and subscribe.